This is our news, the weekend edition. And on the broadcast tonight, COVID-19 reaches Exuma as the island records its first case. Plus, we take a look at Grand Bahama's second surge. And later, we introduce you to the newest primary school student of the year. Good evening, everyone. I'm Andrew Knowles, and thanks so much for joining us. Topping news tonight, the Ministry of Health confirming an additional 16 COVID-19 cases this evening, with one of those cases reported on Exuma. The first COVID-19 patient for that island is a 27-year-old female. No indication was given as to whether she has a travel history or her condition. Five of the new cases are on New Providence, and they include four females, ages 72, 88, 27, and 29, and a 72-year-old male. Meantime, the remaining 10 cases are in Grand Bahama and comprise eight males, ranging in ages from 19 to 48, and two females, ages 21 and 39. The total number of COVID-19 cases is now pegged at 342, with 238 of those active. 10 people are in hospital. Grand Bahama has 169 cases, 135 in New Providence, 21 in Bimini, 6 in the Berry Islands, 4 in Cat Key, 3 in Moores Island, 2 in Cat Island, 1 in Great Guanaki, and 1 in Exuma. Well, many Bahamians are looking for answers tonight. After a video of a wedding in Habra Island, Eleuthera, that took place yesterday, surfaced on social media. It's left many questioning just how it was allowed to proceed despite the weekend lockdown imposed by the competent authority. As he outlined the lockdown restrictions on Friday, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Menis did make mention of this. Weddings will also be permitted with a maximum number of five people, including officiant. However, the video shows more than five people in attendance at the wedding not wearing masks. There was even a Junkanoo rush out. However, members of the group were wearing their mask. Now, our news understands the destination wedding was held at the Coral Sands Hotel in Harbor Island. But in the video, the groom gave some indication that they may have received approvals. <laughs> to, we couldn't have a wedding today. To, we got it done. So. so so much for all you went through and everything that it took to get here because it means more than anything from both of us so much so thank you despite that several people took to social media expressing their displeasure one user said we locked down in our yard but the americans over in bryland have a big wedding Junkanoo rush out included another user said as a foreign resident have to say this seems very wrong. I get these people spend tons of money to fly here, hotel catering, but seems like a double standard. This user asked if they will be brought before the courts as plenty of people had plans to wed yesterday and were forced to cancel or postpone. Now our news tried contacting Tourism Minister Dionisio Diagler and the Island Administrator. However, we were unsuccessful. We did speak to police, but there was no official response up to news time. Well, we are four days into Grand Bahama's two-week lockdown. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis placed the island in lockdown following an explosion of new cases. With more than 150 reported cases already, the numbers are expected to rise with more testing. State Minister for Grand Bahama, Kwesi Thompson, believes the lockdown is the best thing. We completely agree, and I believe most of the residents of Grand Bahama agree uh, with the decisive, tough, uh, but necessary action that the Prime Minister uh, made uh, in, in doing this lockdown and in doing this lockdown at the time that he did. Medical officials have confirmed the island as the latest COVID-19 hotspot. It's a major concern given the current state of Grand Bahama's healthcare system. The exercise that we have as it relates to contact tracing is very, very labor intensive. It involves not only 
discussing cases and going through things on the phone with the persons and the contacts, but it also means getting out there and beating the pavement and actually having discussions, doing evaluations and doing assessments. More than 400 tests have been completed and more are expected in the coming days. Head of Grand Bahamas COVID-19 Task Force, Dr. Frank Bartlett, says as most of the cases are asymptomatic to mild, they don't have to come into the hospital. Um, we've been fortunate in the sense that the cases that are hospitalized, the majority of them have a turnaround period of anywhere from three to five days. Um, the more severely ill are the ones who come into the hospital um, in moderate to severe um, distress or with moderate to severe disease. Their extended stay is usually uh, goes out to as much as seven days. So we've been very, very fortunate. Before the reopening of the borders on July 1st, Grand Bahama went nearly two months without recording any new cases. However, Minister Thompson admits many residents began to let their guard down. In my own observation, uh, when, as, when Grand Bahamians uh, saw that uh, our numbers had gone down, we had not had uh, a case for uh, 60 days, um, we, we saw persons out and about without wearing masks. Uh, we saw persons who were uh, out and about uh, visiting families and were not um, uh, practicing that social distancing. Uh, we saw people crowding in, in the, uh, places like Port Lucaya, uh, crowding at Fish Fry, and these other places. And unfortunately, uh, I don't think that they uh, observed the necessary social distancing protocols. He also suggested addressing the issue of travel by Bahamians. I don't have an answer for it. However, it is an answer that we are going to have to resolve. And collectively as a government, we are going to have to be able to, uh, to answer because it is a serious situation, especially given the circumstances that most Bahamians will travel to Florida. And Florida at the moment is at the uh, center of the United States COVID uh, situation. So we will have some very tough decisions to make. Successive hurricanes, including devastating Dorian, have prepared Grand Bahamians for the tough situation they find themselves in due to COVID-19, according to two longtime Grand Bahama residents. Our Jared Higgs tells us more. We're resilient people. We're determined people. We have benched this before. We will build for moments like this. Lionel Morley says Hurricane Dorian didn't impact him as severely as other Grand Bahamians and Abaconians, but the trade unionist still remembers the storm with fear. I have never heard that level of communication, that level of waves, that level of, of thunder, that level of rain. I've never heard a stranger on the outside of my door talking to me and everybody else in Grand Bahama the way it has. The monster storm struck Grand Bahama about 10 and a half months ago and left a mark that will be remembered for generations. Now, though, Grand Bahama has another foe, the COVID-19 virus. The island was the first to be put on lockdown after a sharp spike in cases. Yeah, that, that's the one-two punch. Dorian, Dorian has prepared us for anything. Dorian has prepared us for almost anything. Uh, you have to been in the midst of Dorian to understand what I'm saying. But if you could get through Dorian, you could almost get through anything. Morley says he will use the current lockdown to spend time with family. Another Grand Bahamian who knows the hardships of Dorian is Janet Dawkins. Well, we're used to hardship in Grand Bahama, and um, we just roll with it, you know. Dawkins has lived in Grand Bahama for more than 40 years. Hobbies and social media will keep her occupied during the lockdown. Still, she says the long-term economic prospects are tough. I feel like Grand Bahama from the Gulf War, from the Gulf War, never bunks back to where it was. And so it's just going to take time to get the economy back up and, and running. Reporting for our news weekend, I'm Jared Higgs. Outspoken Member of Parliament for Pine Ridge, Frederick McElpine, is lashing out at government, which he said needs to come up with a long-term plan amid a second surge in COVID-19 cases. Berthony McDormand has that. What is the government's plan if there is not a vaccine and we have to continue living with COVID-19 and the competent authority? What is the plan? That is what the issue is. And for many behemoths and the uncertainty for many behemoths because behemoths want to know where do we go from here? 
That was the candid response by the Pine Ridge MP as Grand Bahama began a two-week lockdown amid a second surge in COVID-19 cases. Michael Pine questioned how long can the country continue on in this state. There is no vaccine before 2021. What is the Bahamas going to do? How long are you going to continue to dream the public purse? What about businesses? On Thursday, government debated and passed a resolution to extend the COVID-19 emergency powers order to September 30th. Michael Pine feels the order should have been extended for 30 days. I know that we are really definitely now more than ever in a state of emergency. Uh, I would have preferred because of the fact that the company of attorney has been controversial to many Bahamians. If he had just extended it for just 30 days and if we need to extend it again, we could come back to the house and do it. I know that the house is now on break until September, but uh, this word that we should be available at any given reason, a moment to return to the House of Assembly to deal with such a matter, uh, which is important. As Grand Bahama is now being considered a hot spot for COVID-19, Michael Pine said he thinks the higher number of cases is only because testing has increased. His comments come days after Deputy Chief Medical Officer Dr. Delon Brennan said health officials are now engaging in wide-scale testing. The reality is the reason why the numbers are high in Grand Bahama at this time is because there's more testing going on in Grand Bahama more than any place else in the Bahamas. So obviously when you have more testing, you're going to have numbers rising. The last time I spoke with you, I said to you, I didn't believe that COVID was just in Grand Bahama, Nassau, and in Bimini. Since then, we've seen where we've had persons in Cat Island, Moss Island, Cat Key, where these numbers are growing. And no doubt, if Nassau starts doing testing as they are uh, in high volume, as they are doing in uh, Grand Bahama, the numbers will go up. Reporting for our news, I'm Bertheny McDermott. The national fly carrier Bahamas Air announcing the suspension of all flight services effective this Wednesday until further notice. The airline is also adjusting its domestic flight schedule for tomorrow and Tuesday. In a statement, Bahamas Air says these measures are necessary to allow the airline to remain in compliance with new COVID-19 emergency orders outlined by government on Friday. The airline will operate two round-trip flights to Marsh Harbor Abaco, Rock Sound Eleuthera and Georgetown Exuma on Monday and Tuesday. There will be round, one round trip flight on Monday to Governor's Harbor, North Eleuthera, Deadman's Key Long Island, San Salvador, Inagua, Meguana, Acklands and Crooked Island. There will also be one flight on Tuesday to Acklands. Tickets can be used for future travel and change fees will be waived through May 31st of next year. Still to come on our news, NGOs need continued support. And find out who is the primary school student of the year. Those stories coming up when our news, the weekend edition, returns. It was Chichino. Hmm. Rev over the next promotion? Okay, okay. Hmm. Nice. Bye. Bye. You give up it. Best to water tree. Rev is making this summer hotter than ever with our Rev Hot Summer Staycation. Simply upgrade to Rev Trio and use your free apps like Rev Go Play to watch your favorite NBA teams and Rev Go Voice to stay connected and enter to win a free staycation on us. You can also enter to win a bi-weekly home party for you and your family, or a weekly drawing for a sleek new mobile device. Don't get caught daydreaming. Get in the game and into the fun. Visit rev.bs slash trio for details. Rev, you and us, together. Next tonight, with hundreds in need, the Red Cross is encouraging people who can to donate. Director General Sean Brennan said all NGOs have seen increased demand for essential items. Our Jillian Gray reports. 
While accepting a $10,000 donation from the Chinese Community Association, Director General of the Red Cross, Sean Brennan, expressed the need for the community to continue to support. As he said, the cry for help is great. We have a lot of people who are vulnerable in our country. And the Red Cross on a daily basis, we try to meet their needs, whether it's clothing, housing, people who have children who need those kinds of supplies that young babies or infants would need. We try to meet the need, so we need help. The Red Cross has 30 full-time staff members, but Brennan said it takes dozens more in volunteers to fulfill their mandate. He added there were a great deal of volunteers after the passage of Hurricane Dorian, and he hopes people will continue to help. The Red Cross is still assisting people affected by that deadly storm and now has the added pressure of assisting those affected by COVID-19. So individuals have been negative, negatively impacted since Hurricane Dorian and the Bahamas Red Cross, we continue to assist day in and day out in terms of helping those who have been devastated as a result of Hurricane Dorian and now COVID-19 has only exacerbated the situation. As a part of the National Food Task Force, the Red Cross assists people living in the southeastern zone of New Providence and people in Bimini, the Berry Islands, Andrus, Cat Island, and the Exumas. Pallets of food to feed up to 200 people are sent out each week. The Red Cross also gives out about 1,000 hot meals per day. Brennan said all NGOs are experiencing a surge of people coming forward seeking help. And these are people from various communities, you name it, we've had it. Uh, COVID-19 is actually in the fact that individuals have now been laid off. This has actually increased the need for individuals. The government has come to the assistance of the Bahamas by providing more than well, $16 million. And then groups such as, such as ours, with our help from the Chinese Community Association, we've been making up the difference in terms of providing the need. So I could say that it's, it's increased more than tenfold. Reporting for our news weekend, I'm Jillian Gray. Following the revelation that overall crime decreased by 4% for the first half of 2020, Progressive Liberal Party leader Philip Davis said despite those numbers, the fear of crime is still rampant in the country. The fear of crime is still rampant in the country. That if, if crime has been reduced by 4% to date over last year, we need to ask ourselves, well, how effective that was. Statistics also revealed a 22% decrease in murders and a 34% decrease in armed robberies. When our news, the weekend edition comes back from the break, meet the 2020 Bahamas Primary School Student of the Year. And later, we take a look at the most memorable quotes of the week, so stay tuned. It was Chichino. Hmm. Rev over the next promotion? Okay, okay. Hmm. Nice. Bye. Bye. You give up it. That's the water tree. Rev is making this summer hotter than ever with our Rev Hot Summer Staycation. Simply upgrade to Rev Trio and use your free apps like Rev Go Play to watch your favorite NBA teams and Rev Go Voice to stay connected and enter to win a free staycation on us. You can also enter to win a bi-weekly home party for you and your family or a weekly drawing for a sleek new mobile device. Don't get caught daydreaming. Get in the game and into the fun. Visit rev.bs slash trio for details. Rev, you and us together. Welcome back to our news, the weekend edition. Brave, kind, diligent, adventurous, well-balanced, and resilient. These are just some of the characteristics that describe Haley Wilson, who was named Bahamas Primary School Student of the Year. The 12-year-old head girl at Summit Academy beat out 110 other nominees to walk away with a $7,000 scholarship during a virtual ceremony held yesterday really good but like it's almost unbelievable to me that I actually was able to win such a prestigious award and I mean out of all the excellent candidates they have that they chose me to win it's just it really feels like an honor. 
Aside from maintaining a 4.0 cumulative grade point average, Haley is extremely active in the chess club, Helping Hands, St. Francis Catholic Church, and the Lawrence Carroll Dance Academy. Despite officials having to postpone the ceremony from May due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Haley says she remained focused. Honestly, I think it was just the excitement of the competition and the anticipation that you had waiting to see who won. And I think in the end it was really worth it, just the wait for the competition and the fact that everyone was really able to pull this together, it just already means so much to me. The first runner-up was 11-year-old Raquel Stewart of Queens College. She won a $4,000 scholarship. Zion Knowles of Xavier's Lower School was named second runner-up and also received a $4,000 scholarship. Rounding out the top five were Alexis Roberts of Kingsway Academy, who was third runner-up, and Roanna Santiel of Garventine's Primary, fourth runner-up. Both were awarded $3,500 scholarships. In addressing this year's nominees virtually, Education Minister Jeff Lloyd challenged them to become the best version of themselves. And so you are already great. You just have to realize it and live in that reality. To affect your future, you have to live in it now. You have to become the person today that you want to be tomorrow. You get no more out of life than you are willing to put into it. Because as I said, my theme is, we shall overcome. But it is up to each one of us to make it happen. I always say to young people to repeat this sentence. If it is to be, it must be up to me. More than $180,000 in scholarships and prizes were awarded to the students. And we say congratulations to all of them. Well, up next, the countdown to our quote of the week. So stay tuned. Finally tonight, we take a look back at the most memorable moments of the week in news. Health Minister Renwood Wells responds to critics who question his ability to head that ministry amid a global pandemic takes the number three spot. Health is not just the Minister of Health or the technical professionals or the Prime Minister or the elected officials. It is all of us together in the Bahamas protecting ourselves. In at number two are vendors who were saddened and appalled by the Prime Minister's decision to close restaurants in Arawaki and Potter's Key Dock once again without a promised reopening date. I met my staff on the bar, at the table, in the kitchen, with tears. In the eyes. As a business owner, what do I do? Prime Minister, where is your heart for the small man? We just opened up, what, two weeks, a month ago, after four months COVID. But actually, we've been doing bad before COVID. He should give us allowance, because my friend invests a lot of money. They buy extra 20 cases. What they, like, hold on. My other brother buy uh, 100 count. And I mean, just by the and out of, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the Prime Minister, what he should do is give us a few days before closing down the dock. You know what I mean? So we gotta make something back to feed your family. But taking the top spot for quote of the week is Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, who apologized to Bahamas Air passengers from Florida and Grand Bahama after they were forced into quarantine. For the inconvenience, I would like to apologize for to those Bahamians who were um, definitely inconvenienced and in that some may have had accommodations waiting for them. And um, they too would have been placed in such temporary facilities until proper health um, investigation were, was completed. 